Compounding is obviously the key to making money um, over the long term. And compounding allows us to take moderate sums of money and to grow them into larger sums by adding a return to them in every year and then gaining a return on a sum that reflects the accumulated returns that have been gained in prior years. And that's why money grows faster and faster with compounding. But what takes away from compounding is clearly taxes. If we end up paying taxes on every return that we get, the amount is going to grow by less because we will have given some back in, term, in taxes. And the ultimate amount that we end up with is much less. Let's take an example of a savings plan where we're putting away $1,000 of gross income, where we're paying 40% on the $1,000, so we're effectively getting $600, and then we're saving it at 7%, and we're paying 40% tax on the return as well. And we're going to do this for 10 years. So basically, we're taking $1,000, paying 40% tax, and ending up with $600. We're going to get a 7% return on those $600, and we're going to pay 40% tax on the return every year. The money will grow, and it will grow as shown in the following uh, fact. Those thousand dollars of income ended up uh, at 600, first of all, after the 40%. They ended up growing by 7%. We ended up paying tax on the gain. We ended up with 7,270 um, after uh, 10 years growing that money at uh, 7%. Now, obviously, we only contributed six thousand. So the con we could, we only contributed um, over those ten years six thousand because we contributed six hundred dollars in each of ten years. So compounding still took place, and there was a return earned. But let's look at what happens um, if we were able to save the full thousand dollars and we didn't pay tax on the return. Well, we would now instead of getting six hundred in our pockets because we didn't pay the forty percent tax, we would end up saving a thousand, and we would get seven percent on that and not pay tax on that. Well, in that case, we end up with, as shown in this exhibit, $1,816. So we end up with almost twice as much. Now, when the government wants us to save, and this isn't a question of tax evasion, this is a question of using plans that allow us to save and that allow us to avoid taxes on the return. Now, there are other variations of this. For example, in some cases, we might have to pay tax on the income, but we would not pay tax on the returns. So in that case, we would still end up with $600, and we would, but then we would not pay tax on the 7% return annually. In that case, we would end up with just under $8,300, and it would look like this. See, if we don't pay taxes on the $1,000 initially as income and we don't pay tax on the return, the amount of money that we end up with is much, much greater than if we pay it on the 40% on both the income and on the return. And because the government wants us to save, in every country, there are, in every Western country, there are some means of saving some of these taxes, and they vary from country to country. But for example, in the US, a 401k plan would allow someone to put away the money pre-tax, i.e. the $1,000 as opposed to the 600, and then compound the return without taxes, i.e. get the 7%, not 7%, and then give 40% back in taxes. Bottom line is that compounding is powerful no matter what, and compounding allows us to grow money even if we end up with, this in this example, the 600 growing at 7% and we pay taxes. And there is no argument that takes away from the power of compounding that relates to taxes. But if we can save the taxes as well, because the governments put in place mechanisms to allow us to save for the long term, then we can magnify the amount that we compound to greatly. And this is done by governments because they want us to have money when we're 65 and not come uh, begging. Uh, and so within reason, you know, there are programs in place to allow us to put money aside and to compound it tax-free. And as we can see, the benefit and the impact on the ultimate amount that we end up with is huge.